What is going on YouTube? I am the Pokemaster Mike, bringing you guys our week 14 team recap and battle video from season 2 of the Universal Pokemon League. This week we are taking on Coach Nakora from Team Chaos. This is a game I've been looking forward to all season. Nakora is one of the best in the league. Um, I think coming into this game his record is 8-5, and five, but that is not reflective of how good this man actually is. Um, like I, One game in particular he lost on a 50-50 uh, damage roll earlier this year. Um, I, there was one game in particular I think he lost because of uh, a ridiculous amount of hacks. Like This man could very easily be a solid 10-3 um, and 3 or even 11-2 and 2 through, uh, through 13 games. So um, definitely got our work cut out for us this week. His team is ridiculously, ridicu ridiculously? ridiculously uh, well equipped to handle ours. We have a very bad matchup on paper I feel like. I'm going to put it up on the screen right now. But um, the two, the two big mons, like I, I could go through chapter and verse of his team, like I do, uh, talking about what they do. But the two big threats here are Charizard X and Manaphy. Uh, the two of them just kind of run house on our entire roster. Um, so I feel like uh, the best way for us to deal with that is with the team we brought. So let's go ahead and discuss. Our first mon is Uxie with Foul Play, Thunder Wave, Trick Room, and Memento. 248 HP, 252 Special Defense. 252 physical defense, I'm sorry, with the impish nature and 8 in special defense. Rock and Foul Play, Thunder Wave, Trick Room, and Memento. So uh, you can probably guess what this UC is here to do Trick Room and then Memento into Belly Drum Snorlax, which I'll talk about Snorlax a little bit later. Um, Thunder Wave is there to slow down the Charizard. Now I know running Thunder Wave and Trick Room seems a little bit counterintuitive, um, but if I see Nakora's team and I feel like, you know what, Trick Room might not have the best matchup, um, Thunder Wave might be the way to go, then I can start Thunder Waving his mons. Thunder Waving Charizard would be nice. Thunder Waving Tornadus would be nice. Thunder Waving. Um, um, a Cobalion would be nice. Thunder Waving. Oh, any number of things on his team. Even Manaphy, if he doesn't bring a Rain Dance, would be very, very nice. You know, if we don't have to worry about hydration. Um, you know, if we happen to know he's not hydration, or even if even if we're not sure. You know, Thunder Waving Manaphy would be really nice, too. So, a lot of uh, really fast things on his team, potentially, that Thunder Waving would be nice. Um, if Trick Room does not have a good matchup. Or, if we don't see an opportunity late game to get Trick Room back up again, we can always Thunder Wave and go from there. So, that's kind of the UC Foul Play, too, there for the Charizard, primarily. Um... The way foul play works, it does more damage to your opponent based off of your opponent's attack stat, not yours. So if the Charizard gets up a D dance or two, and it, we have to sack something off to it, then you know that's fine. I'm perfectly willing to sack a th something off to it, and then throw in Uxie and click foul play, and it'll do really good damage um, if he has a Dragon Claw or Dragon Claw, Dragon Dance or two up. I cannot speak today, um, but foul play is primarily there for the Charizard. Um, if he brings like a physically offensive Tornadus, it's there for that. Um, we have to be careful though, that we don't click it on a potential Cobalion switch in, because uh, that'll give Cobalion a justified boost, and that is not something I really want to deal with. Um, I don't think Cobalion would be a switch into this thing um, necessarily. Uh, it could, it, he could switch it in, feeling like he can get free Swords Dance on it or something like that. Um, but uh, in any case, we do have to be careful um, that we don't click Foul Play on a Cobalion switch in giving it a justified boost, so that is something to keep in mind there. Our next mod, another physically defensive mod, we're bringing Rotom Wash this week with Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, Toxic, and Thunder Wave leftovers, and again, like I said, fully physically defensive. So uh, you can tell I'm very afraid of the Charizard, because <laughs> I'm bringing two of my bulkier mods and I'm running them both physically defensive. Um, the reason we're bringing dual status on Rotom this week with both Toxic and Thunder Wave, again, he's got a lot of fast mods that would be nice if I could slow them down. And also, like, even if those mods are Thunder Waved, um, you know, Snorlax is going to be faster than them, even in Trick Room, even if they are Thunder Wave, because Snorlax's speed is ridiculously slow. So, for Snorlax, it doesn't matter so much if they're Thunder Waved. It will matter for Haxorus. I'll talk about Haxorus in a minute. Um, but uh, the Thunder Waving the Mons is not bad, but I'd also like to Toxic some of his Mons, too. Uh, toxicing the Porygon 2 would be nice. If he brings Claydol, Toxicking that would be nice. Um, I could definitely see him bringing Claydol. It actually is a pretty good Infernape check on his team. I think it's his second best Infernape switch in after um, Manaphy. But even Manaphy actually doesn't want to switch in and take a close combat. Like, I think um, I think uh, Tornadus easily revenge kills Infernape, but it doesn't necessarily want to switch in and take a Flare Blitz or something of that nature. Um, so I think Claydol would be a mom that he would definitely bring. It can Rapid Spin Rocks away, because Rocks are actually pretty good against his team with Tornadus and Charizard. Um, so it could come, it could Rapid Spin his Rocks away, it switches into Infernape. Um, so Toxicking that thing would be really, really nice. Um, Toxicking Porygon 2 would be really nice. Toxicking potential Tangrowth would be nice. Um, so, 
There's a lot of things like getting a Toxic off of on his team too would be really nice against. So uh, that's why the dual status, not like Paint Split or anything like that. I feel like having both of them could be really, really useful in this game. Our next mod is Haxorus with Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Shadow Claw, and Swords Dance, rocking the Ghost DMZ with Mold Breaker, a full HP, full attack, Adamant Nature. So we're not running any speed investment because this Haxorus is designed to clean up in Trick Room. Uh, I know that's risky running two Trick Room sweepers. Uh, we'll talk about Gardevoir in a second, but we do have two Trick Room setters. Gardevoir of course being the second one um so i know that's a little risky but i feel like that's the kind of team i need to bring to deal with nakora's team um he's just got so much speed and um i feel like the only way for me to deal with his team is to get it get trick room up where my mons will be faster uh get set up and then and then just run through his team he does have a lot of bulk um, but he also has a lot of mons that I know if I get set up, I, I can I can run through. I felt like Haxorus and Snorlax were the two best mons I had to kind of set up and run through his team. So they're both designed to win inside of Trick Room. So we have to keep Trick Room up as much as possible in this game. Uh, otherwise, we're probably going to get handed a big fat L. But, um, you know, that's what this Haxorus is designed to do. The Ghost DMZ with Shadow Claw is specifically made for Mimikyu. Um, I felt like I really didn't have that much for it. Uh, but with Mold Breaker, we uh, don't have to worry about its disguise. We hit it through the disguise. And then with Ghost DMZ Shadow Claw, we guaranteed one shot it from full unless he's running like a sash or something like that. Um, that's just in case like we don't have a focus sash up. Uh, if he throws in Mimikyu against a uh, Haxorus, I would fully expect him to go for like um, a Swords Dance in front of me. Um, so if he goes for Swords Dance in front of Haxorus, um, this is assuming of course Trick Room's not up because he'd be faster. He, I don't think he'd throw it in inside a Trick Room where uh, you know he would, I think, understand and realize that we're not running any speed investment. We're we're uh, we're going to be faster. But outside of Trick Room, like if Haxorus is in, he could throw in Mimikyu. And if he wants to try and set up a Swords like predicting me to switch out, we can go for the Ghost Z Shadow Claw and um, go from there because he might feel like he can live one like a, like an unboosted shadow claw he might feel like he can live one and thus go for the um go for the swords dance uh, without fear um and then he can realize i can go for play rough next turn but um the ghost z is just to ensure that if we don't have a swords dance up we kill the mimic from full as long as he doesn't bring sash mimic so that's kind of the thought there our next mon is mega gardevoir with hyper voice Sci shock trick room and healing wish um, again, kind of like the Haxorus, full special attack invested, but instead of speed investment, we're going with HP investment. So, again, the purpose of Gardevoir is to come in, click Trick Room, um, maybe not Healing Wish immediately, because Gardevoir does have some usefulness um, it, from an offensive perspective. It can threaten out. Um, you know, Cobalion does not want to switch in and take a Hyper Voice, not really. Um, there's a couple other things on his team, too, that don't really want to deal with Gardevoir. Manaphy really doesn't enjoy dealing with a bulkier Gardevoir. Um, you know, Manaphy doesn't really feel like he can set up in front of Guard, so if Manaphy comes in, uh, I think Manaphy gets access to Shadow Ball, so it might feel like it can go for a Shadow Ball and do some good damage to us, but um, with our Spadef being really good and then us having HP investment, uh, we'll take that no problem, and we can we can Hyper Voice uh, Manaphy until the cows come home. All that sort of good stuff. Um, but uh, the purpose of this Gardevoir is to set up Trick Room. I ideally... Ideally, Yuxi and Gardevoir each get up two Trick Rooms on their own. So ideally, we have Trick Room up four different times over the course of this game. Uh, that would be the ideal. Um, and, you know, Yuxi, you know, it's it's going to eventually Memento into Snorlax, and, or this Gardevoir is going to eventually Healing Wish into Snorlax. For those who don't know, Healing Wish basically it restores your HP fully, and I believe it restores, it gets rid of any statuses that you have. Uh, yeah, it's fully healed. So HP goes up to full, status is gone, and all that happens before Stealth Rock damage uh, is uh, taken into account. So if we come in on Stealth Rocks or any other kind of hazard that Nakora might bring, uh, and we Healing Wished into whatever Mon, like say it was Snorlax or say it was Haxorus, we come in on it, we go back up to full first, and then we take the damage. So we can come in with that Mon, whatever Mon we Healing Wish into on 1%, and we're fine. Um, Z Memento would work the same way if we were bringing Z Memento, but we're not, obviously, we're bringing uh, Leftovers on Yuxi. So, that is kind of the thought process there. Gardevoir, Hyper Voice, Psy Shock, just kind of standard coverage. So, uh, the Snorlax, nothing really unusual in terms of what I've brought on Snorlax in the past. Facade Earthquake, Recycle, Belly Drum, Full HP, Full Attack, Adamant, Figgy Berry, Gluttony. Uh, we Belly Drum up, we'll pop the Figgy Berry, we'll go back up to full, and then uh, we just go from there. Um, ideally... We get Snorlax in set up twice in Trick Room, and we can we can do some damage with it. Um, I think I'm gonna need to get Haxorus and Snorlax a combined three times in in Trick Room and set up. And I don't with Haxorus not having a barrier or any way of healing itself, I don't see Haxorus getting set up twice. I think Haxorus is gonna be the late game uh, cleanup crew. 
um, or the first mod that we get in and the kind of breakthrough Nakora's team uh, mod so that Snorlax can clean up late game. Um, you know, I don't see Haxorus being able to get inside of Trick Room twice. I think once Haxorus is in and once it's set up, uh, once the Trick Room ends there, we just kind of let it go down. And whatever it accomplished, it accomplished. Um, but Snorlax is the mod. I think we can get it in twice and potentially do some good work with it there um, and whatnot. So that's kind of the thought process there. Earthquake just covers. Uh, he's only got a couple of uh, facade resists. Um, or, uh, yeah, I think Cobalion is the big one. Um, and Mimikyu as well. So Earthquake just kind of covers those. And then our last mon is Infernape with Flare Blitz, U-Turn, Fake Out, and Stealth Rock. So we're running Sash lead Infernape this week. Uh, I would like to lead Infernape, but I know Nakora does like to bring Hazard Removal. Um, he's got two options here, either Armaldo or Claydol. Like I said, I think Claydol is just a better bring against my team. Yes, I do have Rotom Wash, but Rotom Wash also just kind of beats the Armaldo as well. So I feel like in terms of what would you want the Rapid Spinner to do, um, I feel like Claydol just matches up better. Um, Armaldo matches up better against Yuxi, which is the only mon I've brought rocks on this season. I really haven't brought rocks in Fernape at all this season. So Armaldo matches up better in that regard because if he's predicting a, a lead Yuxi, he can lead Armaldo and click like X's or something like that. Um, so I could definitely see that, but I think Claydol matches up better against Infernape. Uh, I feel like his Infernape switch-ins are very, very limited. Uh, he's got Mimikyu, he's got Tornadus, and he's got um, and he's got Claydol. Uh, and like I said, Tornadus and, and Manaphy as well. And like I said, Tornadus does not want to. Tornadus and Mimikyu don't want to take Flare Blitzes. Manaphy doesn't want to take a close combat. Um, Claydol, a physically defensive Claydol, just eats all those up, and it can rapid spin, and it can threaten me out with a Psychic. So I think Claydol is probably his bring. So if he brings Claydol or um, although I probably don't need Infernape. I really, really want to. I want to get them up immediately for Charizard. But if he brings one or both of them, then I'm probably not going to lead Infernape. I might save it for later in the game, or I might just lead and fake out and then U turn and not click rocks immediately, knowing that they're going to be rapid spun away later. Um, but if we have another opportunity to get Ape in and get rocks up uh, later on and get in the game, that would be fine. But if he doesn't bring either one of them, then we're just going to lead Ape and get up rocks immediately. Because getting rocks damage on Charizard would be great, getting rocks damage on Tornadus would be great, any kind of chip damage on Manaphy would be great. Uh, his bulkier mons like P2 or Tank Growth, if we can get any kind of chip damage on them, that would be awesome. Um, and if he leads like a, a Rocks Cobalion, uh, we, we threaten it out with a Flare Blitz uh, or a Close Combat. So that is kind of the thought process there with the team. Uh, like I said, uh, Nakora is one of the best in the league. I've been looking forward to this battle for a really long time. And uh, the hour is finally upon us. But I, as much as I've been looking forward to it, I am very scared. And I'll be honest with you, I, I, if we execute this properly, we can pull out the win. But I, in the back of my, in the back of my head, something is telling me that something is going to go wrong. Either we're going to be crit at an unfortunate time, or so, something is going to go wrong. I just have a feeling. So, um, but you know what? We're going to play confidently, and hopefully, we can pull out the W. And if we get the win, then we are guaranteed uh, to be no worse than eight and seven on the season. Um, well, I should, wait, no, we're sitting at 6-7, and seven. so if we get the win, then we have to win next week, and we're 8-7 and seven on the season. Um, so, uh, But if we get if we get handled a loss, then we're going to be sitting at 6-8, and eight, and then um, at best we can finish one game under 500 for the season, which is not great. I'm not proud of that at all, um, but uh, hopefully we can pull out the W. I'm going to stop rambling, and I will have the battle up here for you guys in just a second. All right, guys, we're here in the battle. Looking at the team, basically brought the team I was expecting, except he brought the Armaldo instead of the Claydol. So I do expect that that Armaldo is his way of removing hazards. So we do have to be wary of that. But otherwise, basically brought the team I was uh, most expecting and most fearing, to be completely honest with you. I really expected P2. I really expected Charizard. Charizard and Manaphy both just rip holes through my roster. Tornadus and Cobalion, I'm not very surprised to see. I think the Tornadus is either going to be Scarfed or maybe an AV variant. I don't expect like a Life Orb or a Z variant. And then the the, uh, the Armaldo, rather, I think is more defensive. Uh, probably carrying rocks of its own. Probably there to rapid spin my rocks away, etc, etc. So with that being said, I think um, I was going to lead, dedicated lead Ape. Um, but now that I see the Armaldo... And now that I see his team like actually in front of me, I kind of actually want to lead with Rotom. Uh, his team is actually very, very weak to Rotom. Uh, two thing, three things weak to Volt Switch before the Charizard Mega Evolves, and uh, two things that are weak to Hydro Pump. So I actually kind of want to lead with Rotom and see what he does here. Um, if he leads Tornadus, we do have to be wary of potential Grass Knot. Um, it's not going to do a lot of damage, but it is something to be mindful of. If he leads Manaphy, we have to be wary of Energy Ball um, and that sort of thing. So. 
I do want to lead uh, Rotom here basically immediately. If he leads Charizard, we can immediately Thunder Wave it. Um, I would expect him to switch out though, probably into Porygon. So actually, I think if he leads Charizard, we Volt Switch. Um, if he leads Tornadus, I think what I'm going to do there is uh, uh, Thunder Wave that thing. If he leads Manaphy, we Volt Switch out of there. Um, or actually, we probably go hard into something else. He does lead with the Tornadus. Okay. So he was. Uh, he might have been expecting lead Infernape. Um, what I actually want to do here, Thunder Waving this thing would be nice, but I definitely expect a P2 switch in right here. So what I actually want to do is go ahead and fire off a Toxic. If he fires off a Grass Knot, that's fine. We should be able to eat it. I don't think this thing gets any other coverage for Rotom. Um, you know, Knock Off would be annoying, um, but at the same time, we're a defensive Rotom. If I have my leftovers knocked off and I have them knocked off, I think firing off a Toxic, landing a Toxic on the Porygon 2 early on in this game would be very, very nice. Um, if he throws in Manaphy to take the Toxic, uh, I don't think he'd switch in Manaphy. He goes for the U-turn. Okay, so uh, if he's not Scarfed, then he knows we're not Scarfed. He does go into the P2, and we do connect our Toxic. Very, very nice. Very, very nice there on that. Um, so I expect a Toxic here coming out from this P2. Um, almost, almost certainly. Um, I'm thinking I kind of just want to Volt Switch. Uh, but the question is, what do I want to go into? What do I want to go into when I Volt Switch? Um, I could go into Guard. That could be very interesting. could also go into Uxie, but I need to keep Uxie around for Charizard. I honestly think my play here would be to Volt Switch and go into, um, go into Infernape and get up my rocks. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to Volt Switch out of here and we're going to go into Infernape. Get some damage off on this P2. Um, I fully expect the Toxic coming in here. Um, and we do see the... Uh, the uh, What's P2's other ability? Analytic? So we don't see download or trace. That's interesting. Is he an analytic Porygon 2? Are you offensive? There's just no way though, right? That did nothing. Are you analytic P2? I'm gonna go into Ape. He goes for the Thunder Wave. Okay. Okay. Very nice prediction on Nakora's part there. I'm going to go ahead and I want to get up my rocks, but at the same time, I could definitely see the Tornadus coming in here. Uh, what do I want to do? Could U turn. But if he stays and it goes for an attack, we are in serious trouble. Uh, I'm going to get up my rocks. I'm going to get up my rocks. I think rocks are the play here. Um, he could stay in and go for an attack, but we are sashed, so we do live. Ideally, we don't get fully paired here. If he switches, then he switches. Um, I would think his switch in here would be the Tornadus. I think it would definitely be the Tornadus, to be honest with you. You can also see him staying in and attacking them. He really called out the Thunder Wave uh, there with us Volt switching out and going into Infernape. Very good prediction on Nakora's part. Very good prediction on the chorus part. All right, he goes into the Armaldo. All right. Wow, was he calling out that we were Rock's ape? Wow, that's interesting. Whew. Okay. Um, my play here, 100%, is to go into Rotom. If he wants to rapid spin, then let him rapid spin. That's fine. He does rapid spin. Okay. Cool. So. Once again, like I'm in a situation here, I can Hydro Pump and, and do some damage to this Armaldo. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fire off a Hydro Pump. And we miss our Hydro Pump. That is unfortunate. That is most unfortunate. Now I'm going to Volt Switch out of here, predicting P2 to want to come back in. I don't want to stay in. I'm going to Volt Switch out here. Um... I think what I have to do is I have to get Snorlax in Trick Room basically immediately. Um, he could have brought Taunt Cobalion, he very well could have. I'm just trying to think between Yuxi and Gardevoir, what is less useful, you know? Um, I, need to, I need to get Snorlax in here. I think my play here is to go into 
He didn't bring the Mimic so our Ghost DMZ is kind of wasted. He didn't bring Claydol either. We can still get good damage off on something with Ghost Z. Could be useful for something. Uh, I'm just trying to think here. I need Uxie for Charizard. I definitely need Uxie to keep you keep Uxie around for Charizard. I think I'm going to go into Gardevoir. I think I'm going to go into Gardevoir here. And I'm going to Mega Evolve and fire off the Trick Room. He should be... I. He's not going to be faster than us. He's not going to be faster than us. I wonder if he brought Trick Room on this P2. He brought Thunder Wave. But if he brought Trick Room on P2... Hmm. This could be very, very interesting. I'm not going to... I'm not going to Healing Wish immediately, because I want to see what he's going to do. He fires off the Shadow Ball. Okay, cool. So we go for the Trick Room. Alright. Nice. So now... I'm going to fire off a Hyper Voice. He goes for the Recover. Okay, cool. Nice damage. Good damage, Guard War. Very good damage. Um, that did 36. Are you physically defensive, or are you specially defensive? Let's find out. Porygon 2. 33 to 40. Let's see, are you fully specially defensive, is the question here. With the Eevee Light. 30 to 36 on a Hyper Voice, that did 36. If you have no special defense investment, does 39 min. So you definitely have some spadef investment. So Psyshock is actually going to do a little bit more, at least in theory. So I'm going to go ahead and fire off the Psyshock. He goes for the Tri-Attack. That is fine. Okay, so we get rid of the P2. That's huge. That is absolutely huge. It is absolutely huge. It's one big annoying wall down that we don't have to deal with now. I would expect Cobalion to want to come in here. The Armaldo comes in here now. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go immediately into Rotom. If he goes for his own rocks. Okay. That's fine. And now we. I think now we Volt Switch. I think now we Volt Switch. I think now we Volt Switch. Um, I think he just stays in here. I think that's his play. He should be faster inside of Trick Room than us. Like, we're running we're running a defensive Rotom, but unless he ran max speed Armaldo, he should still be... And even, like, he maxes out at 207, we're at 208. So he should be faster than us here. So if he attacks, then he'll go first, and if he switches, then we get momentum. So now we Volt Switch out of here. I think we're looking good, though. I think, uh, with the, uh, I think we're looking good. We gotta get Snorlax in here, though. We gotta get Snorlax in here. He goes into Tornadus. Okay. That is awesome. So, what I think I want to do here... What I'm thinking I want to do here is I want to go into Yuxi. If he brings Taunt, then he brings Taunt. Would he have brought Taunt on this though? That is the real question. We do see the U. We did see the U-turn earlier. Would he have brought Taunt on this Yuxi, or on this Tornadus rather? Hmm. With Rocks up, our Infernape Sash is as good as broken. So, that's a thing we have to keep in mind as well. Uh, I'm just trying to think here. Uh, what's the best mod for me to go into at this point? I want to say it's Yuxi. I want to say Yuxi is our best mod here to go into. We can Thunder Wave this Tornadus. Um, we can Thunder Wave this Tornadus. But at the same time, I think going for a Trick Room here is the better play. If he goes for Taunt, then he goes for Taunt. Um, he very well might be a Taunting Tornadus. We didn't see we didn't see Life Orb earlier. Um, the only move we've seen is is U-Turn. He goes for the knockoff. Okay. 
So he gets rid of our leftovers, and now, now we, now we memento, now we memento into Snorlax. Now we memento into the Snorlax. Ideally, here he stays in. Ideally, here he stays in. Worst case scenario is he goes hard Cobalion here. He stayed in. Okay, that's really good. That's really good. Now we have momentum. Now the Snorlax is coming in hot. Um, if he brought Z Superpower, what does that do to us? If he brought Tornadus Therian, like Max Attack, Adamant, Superpower. He brought Z. And we go into Snorlax. What does that do to us? That is going to kill, unfortunately. Hmm. Would he have brought Z Superfire though? We've seen U turn and knock off. Knock off did how much to you? It did 24.9. Let's see. Is he offensive? Or is he physically offensive? 32 to 39, so he is not offensive at all. Or physically offensive, I should say. Knock off. 26 to 31 to Yuxi. He's not adamant either. He's something else. 23 to 28, so he is not physically invested at all. So if we go Snorlax here, we guarantee live the all-out pummeling based off what his investment is, if he's got it. So we're going to go Snorlax. Right, and we're going to belly drum up right here. We're going to belly drum up right here, and theoretically we secured two kills with this Snorlax. Um, his Armaldo is his best switch in. Like easily, he should go Armaldo right here. Um, but I cannot afford to let this opportunity go to waste with Snorlax. If he is a physically defensive Armaldo... He's like a rap the rapid spinning set. Earthquake does kill. Um, if he's not physically in if he's not defense invested, if he's just HP invested. We do get off the belly drum. What does he go for here? He goes for the U-turn. Okay, cool. So now he has all the momentum. I think Armaldo is his switch in here, most definitely. Um let's see an earthquake should do 120 to 140 to Armaldo if he's like full fizz def invested. Even then, we have a really good chance to kill with Earthquake. So, let's see what Nakora throws in here to deal with this. Armaldo should be his switch-in. Armaldo should be his switch-in. He could go Cobalion, too, if he's... Um, if he's not fearing an Earthquake. Although, if he goes Cobalion, I'm really worried about him uh, making a double predicting an Earthquake. Going into Charizard and wasting turns of Trick Room that way. But that, that's going to be a risky, risky play if he goes Cobalion. We're going to have to really think about this. He could do the same thing with Armaldo, too, technically. But I feel like Armaldo is a much safer switch in for him because if, he, if, he, if he's worried about Earthquake, whether or not I have it, like if he wants to scout for it, he should go Armaldo, I feel like. Then he can scout for it and play from there. Um... He's taking a really long time to decide this. He might be... He's taking a really long time to decide this. I wonder... I really do think Armaldo is his best play here. At least that's what I would go into if I were him. And I would probably immediately double into Tornadus to scout for the Earthquake. Um, he could go Cobalion too, because he knows I like to run Recycle on this. This is the third time I think I've brought this Snorlax set. He knows I run Recycle on it. Um, so if he assumes I have Recycle and he knows I bring, you know, normal stab, whether it's Facade or Frustration or whatever, that leaves one move slot. So he goes into the Armaldo. Okay. So now the question is, like, we do we Earthquake here? Because Earthquake will kill this thing, at least it should, based on my calc, unless he's, you know, fully physically defensive. It should kill. Or, or, do we 
predict the double actually and go for recycle. That might be a better play. We could go for recycle here and predict a double switch. That might be a better play. Let me calc something. If his Cobalion is offensive, he goes for close combat, we live it from full. If he's jolly. If he's jolly Cobalion, we live a close combat from full, guaranteed. I think my play is actually to recycle. Okay, he stayed in. He went for an earthquake of his own. It doesn't pop our berry. <sighs> Alright, now I, now I earthquake on my own here. Oh, that was the worst possible outcome for that turn. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That was the worst possible outcome for that turn. If he had, if he had, if he had gotten a one percent, how much did that do? Thirty percent from Romaldo. Twenty-eight to thirty-three. If he had no attack investment at all, thirty was the max roll. If he had no attack investment, so maybe he knew guaranteed that he lived that. Mm. Now we now we have to earthquake here. We do kill him, but now Cobalion comes in and just kills our Snorlax. Just revenges our Snorlax. That is very unfortunate. If he'd gotten a one percent higher roll there, it would have taken us down to exactly fifty. The berry would have popped. We'd have been back up at full, and we could have lived a hit from the Cobalion. Ah, that's annoying. That is annoying. Mmm. I I really thought he was gonna double. And even then, when he stayed in, he went for Earth. If he'd gone for Stone Edge, and if, assuming he had Stone Edge, that would have popped our berry. Mmm. Even Facade would have been better there, because that would have at least powered up our Toxic. Yeah, Cobalion comes in now. Okay. So the question is, do I save this? I want to say I save this. And I go Rotom. But at the same time, do I really... Do I really save it? Let's see, his play here 100% is to go for close combat. Like, I have nothing that wants to switch in and take that. Do I let Snorlax go down here, and then go into Rotom and Volt Switch and try and pick up some momentum? Hmm. His play here has to be to close combat. gotta be. I think what I do, I don't switch in Rotom and let Rotom take the close combat, because I don't think I'm going to get another opportunity to get the Snorlax in later. I mean, I definitely could. Wait a minute, if I save it, and I come back in later, the rocks are going to pop my berry. What do I not need in this game anymore? <sighs> this is This is huge. This is a big play. What do I not need in this game anymore? The rocks will pop my berry if I come back in later. The rocks will pop my berry if I come back in later. I think my play... And Gardevoir will actually um, bring Snorlax back up to full with Healing Wish if I can get that off. I think I sack Infernape, go into Rotom, and Thunder Wave this thing. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sack Infernape. Please don't Swords Dance. Okay, he close combat. Okay, good, 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 good. This is what I like to see. Alright. What I'm actually going to do here is go for Fake Out Chip Damage. Uh, break a potential Sash if he's got it. I'm going to go for the Fake Out Chip. Snorlax could matter later. Um, and I think... He's got to be predicting a Mach Punch. Maybe I just Flare Blitz whatever's coming in here. Maybe I just U-Turn. I'm going to U-Turn, actually. U-Turn's the better play. Um, U-Turn is the better play here. Because if he goes Manaphy, I want to be able to get momentum. 
I do not want to allow that Manaphy to come in for free here and set up on me. I'm going to U-turn. Okay, he just goes for the Iron Head. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Alright. So now what I do is I come in here with Rotom and I Thunder Wave. Come in here with Rotom and Thunder Wave. And then proceed to Volt Switch out. I think that's my play. Volt Switch out into... Um, he goes into the Tornadoes. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Thunder Waving this thing is really big for me. Um... Yeah, I definitely... I actually kind of want to just go for the Hydro Pump, to be honest with you. I'm going to fire off a Hydro Pump. See what he wants to do. He stays in. That's Assault Bested. Goes for the knockoff. That's going to get rid of our leftovers. We're at half now. Now I want a Volt Switch. Now I want a Volt Switch. Um... I should have Volt Switched that first turn. If I Volt Switched, if I had Volt Switched right there, Guard of War could have come in and we would have been faster. We could have gotten the uh, the uh, healing, the Trick Room off. Potentially. Now I think he's going to U-turn. Could Heart Swap, though. Could Heart Swap. But i got to keep Rotom alive. If I can Thunder Wave... It's, it's, it's easier said than done, but if I can somehow Thunder Wave his roster, we can win with Swords Dance Haxorus. We do have some bulk investment on this Haxorus, so that is something of note to keep in mind. We do Volt Switch. He takes about 35 from that. I'm assuming he's going to U-turn. So, actually, what I want to do is go into Snorlax, pop my berry, and now I'm assuming he U-turn. Oh, he's thumb he's okay. Now I want to just. How do I want to play this? Let me think. How do I win this? His play here is to U-turn into Cob or hard into Cobalion, I should say. I'm gonna go back into Rotom. What did he do here? He went for the Air Slash. Okay. Now I want to Volt Switch again, but this time into Gardevoir. That's so that's so messed up, man. That's that's really bad. How he missed the air. He got a full para followed by a missed air slash. Not that it would have mattered that much because I did switch in the Rotom, but it could have mattered. Like his play here should be go hard Cobalion, like 100%. But to be honest, if knowing that, do I Thunder Wave, predicting Cobalion to come in? I kind of want to Thunder Wave. If I can Thunder Wave that Cobalion, we can win with Haxorus. I'm going to Volt Switch. Okay. And he lives on one! Oh. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to go into Haxorus. I'm assuming he U-turned. Yeah, he U-turned. Okay. He's got to go... He's got to go Cobalion right here. What's that U-turn do? That did 15. How much did uh, Cobalion do to Infernape earlier? With the close combat. Did uh, 75 to my ape. Seventy-five to my ape, so he's definitely invested. It would seem that he's not adamant. Could be adamant. Could have gotten a min roll on adamant. But it seems more likely that he's Jolly Cobalion. So with that being said, how much does he do to Haxorus here with a close combat? Forty seven to fifty five? Goes into Manaphy. Alright. Um, I think we just lose to this Manaphy, though. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think we just lose to this Manaphy. What I have to do... is sack, I think, Rotom. 
get the free switch into guard. And hopefully be able to live to be able to trick room and then healing wish. I think that's what I, think that's what I have to do. Hopefully he didn't just tail glow in our face. If he tail glowed he wins. He ice beamed. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to volt out. But if we die here, that gives us our free switch into guard that we need. I think. I need to get guard in so I can trick room up. Yeah, I volt switch. I need to get guard in so we can get... I need to get guard of war in for free. So I can get the trick room up. Once the trick room is up... I think if he goes Cobalion here, that seals the game and he wins. No, it doesn't. He doesn't win if he goes Cobalion. Um, God, this is gonna be really, really aggravating. He should be faster. He sh he could just kill us here, but that gives Gardevoir a free switch in, which is what I need. And with Guard sitting at what? Let me double check this. Guard is sitting at 48%. If he is, let's see how uh. Ice Beam did 13 to Rotom. Ten to eleven, max special attack. Twelve to fifteen. So I'm assuming you're timid, Manaphy. So if we give you Surf. How much is that doing to my Gardevoir? Twenty-seven to thirty-two. Yeah, I volt switch right here. Ideally. Ideally, he just kills me. And he doesn't tail glow. Tail glow would be the worst possible thing. Ideally, he just kills me here. I want him to kill me. Because then, theoretically, Gardevoir should live the surf. I want him to stay in and kill me. If he, if, if he clicks any kind of setup move or he switches into Cobalion here, I think we lose. If he goes Tornadus, I think we're, we're okay. If he goes Tornadus here for whatever reason. I don't think he would. Going Charizard doesn't make any sense. He's got really, in his in, in, in my opinion, his options here. He could go Tornadus and sack it and get a free switch in and see what I'm going to do. He kills me. Thank God. Okay. So we're going to be at 36%. So, if my calcs were accurate, we should live this. If my calcs were accurate, we should live this. If my calcs were accurate, we should live this. Let me double check. We're at 37. If he's modest, if he's modest, we still should live this. If he's modest, max special attack, we should guarantee live this. Come on, no crit. His play here should be Cobalion, to be honest with you. If he does that, we, he tail glows. He tail glows, okay. Okay. Now, here's my thing. All right, I'm going to Healing Wish right here into Snorlax. He surfs, okay. So now, how much does a plus three surf do to Snorlax? Does he win here? 58 to 69 if he's modest, if he's jolly. 48 to 56. Um, yeah, I think we just lose here. We just lose to this Manaphy. <sighs> I mean, I can recycle my berry first, play around with that. Um, do I have my berry? 
no, the, ber the berry's gone. I have to recycle here. I have to recycle here. I don't think we're going to pull this one out. I think tail glowing there for uh, Nakora was the correct play, because now he gets to he tail glowed again. Why did he do that, though? I mean, we live. He could have... He could have stalled out our trick room, though, by attacking us and popping our berry. Why did he do that? I could have just belly drummed up right there. The only reason I recycled was because I knew if we belly drummed and he surfed, we died. I could have I could have just belly drummed there and, and potentially killed two more things on his team. Oh man, this is going to come right down to the wire, isn't it? Alright, come on. Can we live a surf at least? Ice Beam? Okay, we're going to pick up a kill here with Facade. At least I think we are. Goes into Tornadus. Okay, he's going to let the Manaphy live. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now Cobalion's going to come in here and it's going to win the game for him. Yep, so good game for Nakora. Good game to Nakora. Um, I had a feeling we weren't going to win this one. We didn't really have the best matchup on paper. But I felt like our best way to win was to try and win with Snorlax uh, inside of Trick Room. Uh, Infernape getting paralyzed early on was really huge. Um, we never got a chance to get it back in and get our rocks up. Um, uh, I had a feeling we were going to need to get rocks up for the uh, for the Charizard and for the Tornadus and for whatever else he might have brought. Um, but we just never got a chance to get those rocks up. Uh, I'm going to fire off an Earthquake here, but I think this uh, Cobalion just kills us with close combat at this point. We actually do live it. Um, but uh, uh, Shucka Berry? Uh, we kill him even through the Shucka Berry. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But we are going to pick up a 2-0 loss here. We do drop to 6-8 and eight on the season, so my goal, my base goal for the season of ending with at least an 8-7 and seven record is not going to be met, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to fire off a Dragon Claw here, but Nakora is just going to pick up the kill with Dragon Claw. Good game to him. Uh, it was an enjoyable match. I knew it was going to be a struggle. Um, we did it did look like we had our opportunities, but um, there were a couple of plays where we just misread a little bit, and um, that was that. So, uh, good game to Nakora. Next week, our, our regular season finale, we are taking on Coach Rockhands, and uh, uh, it looks like our team is guaranteed a playoff spot at this point. Uh, team No Hacks needed, so um, just to kind of in brief uh, summarize how uh, the playoffs are shaping up, um, basically, we're either going to be playing the Rough Riders, which is who we're playing next week to close out the regular season, or we're going to be playing Team Eclipse, which consists of Lucy, Jake, and Mandy uh, in the first round of playoffs. So um, depending on who we end up playing first round or who it looks like we're going to play, we might end up, we're probably going to meme out next week anyway. But um, uh, if if, uh, you know, if it looks like we're definitely playing the Rough Riders in the first round, we're definitely going to meme because we don't really want to show them anything a week before we battle them for real for playoffs, you know. So um you know, and I could be playing Rock Hands two weeks in a row, actually, next week to close out the regular season, and we might be playing him in the first round of playoffs. So, um, But uh, we'll talk more about playoffs after our game next week. We'll do, I'll do kind of like a pre-playoff video, actually, after our game next week, kind of talk about who we're playing and uh, how the playoffs are going to work and all that. But uh, that's really it for now. We dropped to 6-8 and eight on the season through 14 games. Not where I wanted to be, but it is what it is uh, thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button your comments are always greatly appreciated uh, please go check out Nakora's YouTube channel Nakora does have a channel now granted um, he does primarily uh, commentate in German over on his channel um, so if you don't speak German you probably won't understand a word of what he's saying but if you do know some German um, or you just want to go and kind of see what they're doing and just get some entertainment out of the gameplay itself and you know the commentary is not that important either way go check him out uh, I'll leave his link below in the description, uh, but I'm going to get up out of here for now, and I will see you guys in the next one.